So there are yeah, lots of things to, to talk about the financial engineering, but I think that the most uh, basic building blocks for all financial instruments, I mean, all financial derivatives are actually two. So one is called the forward, and the other, the other one is called options. These two, with these two, we can make every derivatives. So I'm gonna explain the forwards first, but before I explain the forwards, what it, what it mean by forwards, we need to know what do we mean by financial transactions. So I'm gonna take a very simple example. So for every financial, I think I, this one is better. Uh, the, when we talk about the financial uh, transactions, there are, on, uh, there are always two parties. The one is a buyer and the other one is a seller. So let's say there is a seller and there is a buyer. And in the normal transactions, we may think that, okay, I'm gonna buy something and there is some other people who are willing to sell a product. So the usual transaction uh, goes in this way. So I give him, the buyer gives him money. And then in return, I get some products. So for example, let's say this is an apple. So it's clear, yeah. I and okay, let's say this is one dollar. So I give the seller one dollar and then receive an apple. So that's the usual transaction we can think about. But if we think about it, uh, when we include timing here, then we may think about a little bit different things. So for example, so This is now, and there is some future. And what I just described is everything happens right now. So maybe I'd like to say to its present. But is it possible that I get the product first? So you know, you can see yeah, which one is the buyer and which one is the seller. This part is the buyer and this part is the seller. I can get the product first and then pay my money later. Is it possible? What do you think about it? Uh, and actually, can you write something on the board? Maybe. Oh, I can write. But yeah. But please, yeah, do not write. And actually, this is possible. So I can get the apple right now, and then I'm going to pay later. But as we all know, that the money with the time, we can we can transform the money one dollar right now into uh, some another amount in the future. So that is the, we sometimes say it is a, a future value of the money or sometimes when we discount it to the current value then we say that's the present value of the money. So before I uh, proceed, I would like to say, I, I wanna show you yeah, this graph. So we usually say that if in the future, there is say one dollar, then this is the present. And we evaluate this one dollar with a little bit less than one dollar, say 0.9 dollars. It depends on interest rate. So we all know that we can always uh, transform the current value into the future, or we can 
uh, take the future value and take into the interest rate to make it to the present value of the uh, money. So uh, keep these things in mind. We can actually think about this is also possible situations. So I receive an apple here. And then if I pay $1.1 in the future, and $1.1 is quite arbitrary because I did not, so we just assume some uh, amount of interest rate. So here the $1 is, let's assume that $1 is equivalent to the $1.1. And this is actually possible. So I got the product first and then pay later with some interest. And I hope you agree this is possible. But what about this? So the third one that I want to talk is that there is a seller and here is a buyer. And this is present time. And this is the future. I give $1 first and then receive my apple later. Is it possible? Uh, actually, this is also possible. And it may sound strange, uh, it may sound uh, strange, but actually this is the, uh, the basic beginning form of a stock. So why it is a beginning form of the stock? So I believe that yeah, everyone knows about the stock and what stock means. Okay, let's think about this situation. Very, very old time, in very old time, say 14,000, So yeah, year 14,000. And there were sailors, so with the ship. And they, and they are in Europe. And they wanna make the travel to all to the India. And they wanted to trade from uh, trade between European product, European commodity, and Indian, original Indian products. And then sail it back to their place and their products will be really expensive things. But before we, but this is yeah, a great uh, idea, but since uh, we wanted to start our ship, we need some money as a sailor. So they can think they can borrow money but it might be very dangerous because they cannot be returned because the, in these times, the, the sailing is not, is not a safe job. So there is a chance that they, the, the borrower can lose all the money. So instead of borrowing money, they develop a new concept, so-called stock nowadays. So they receive money right now. And then the European sailors buy some products in Europe and then ship it to the, their ship and then travel all the way to the India. And then they made a trade and then they buy some uh, Indian food or Indian, say, the, the peppers and all the silks. And then way back to Europe and then they sell their Indian products and make a big profit, profit. And then they, once they got their profit, they will give it back to the original investors. And that's the beginning of a stock. So in that sense, this kind of transaction here, I think yeah, it is possible. So the buyer here is actually a stock investor. So they give the money first, 
and then they are going to wait, say, two years or three years, and after that, they can pay it back with very precious uh, Indian products, or sometimes they fail, so they cannot get any anything in return. And that's the beginning of the stock, and I think this is absolutely possible. So the first one is the, the usual regional transactions we can think about. We can think of, and the later one, the second one here, so we got the Apple first and then pay it later with some interest. And actually this is a loan. Uh, so think about it this way. Uh, you buy your house, but you don't have enough money. So you can borrow some amount of money from the bank and then pay it to the house owner. And this house, so here is an apple, but now I think about is a house. And then this house is be yours, but later you pay back to the money with the interest, not to the owner, but to the bank. Then this is also possible. So this, the one, so the, the first one is the, the spot transaction. The second one we can think about as a loan. And the third one we can think about it as a stock. And think about the timing and, okay, so here is one side, there is a money, but the other hand, on the other side, there is a product. And now we have time, now and the future. So the explanation, explanation so far is there is a product on Apple and here is a money. So at the same time, you can transfer it. or we can give money first and then later got the apple so this is the one and actually this is the three and the second one i explained is we got the apple first and then give it money well there is one more possibilities the so one more possibilities that we can think about about the transaction and think about it. And that one more possibility is that the fourth one, this is the now, there is no cash flows, there is no deliveries, there is nothing, there is only contract or only promise that we are going to exchange the Apple with uh, the money. And this fourth one is called the forward contract. So let me say uh, the forward contract in this way. We have a promise. So the buyer and seller there is an agreement between two parties to buy or sell a certain products, in this case, an Apple, at a fixed price today. So, so they agree to buy or sell your products with a fixed price. That fixed price is 1.1 in this case. And that product is an Apple. But that transaction will happen in the future. This is the forward contract. Okay, I'm gonna uh, stop it here and wanted to listen your response. So what do you think about this uh, forward contract? Is there anything that I need to explain some more?
Okay, so the first three transactions. Yes, so the first three transactions also have the fixed price. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, I'm going to explain yeah, once more, but without using the, my, the pen, but just yeah, look at me. <laughs> so here is the yeah, situation. So we have yeah, one side, we have the seller, and the other side, we have a buyer. And we are going to have some transactions. So money can flow from this way to this way, but you can do it now, or you can do it in the future. So money can flow in this way, to this side, to this side. But the one dollar here now can be transformed into a future value of 1.1. So the, the one dollar now is always equivalent to 1.1. So it depends on the interest rate, of course. So it's one dollar is equivalent to 1.1 dollar in the future. So, so it doesn't matter yeah, whether it goes uh, from here to here right with one dollar and it is actually equivalent to from in the future from 1.1 dollar from here to here and the product can also can flow from seller to buyer right now or the products can be flowed from seller to uh, the buyer in the future but the, the problem here is that the value of the, the products can be changed. So since I uh, make an example with an apple, but it, it makes me, it makes you a much more, much more clear that instead of an apple, the real apple, we can think about it as a Apple computer's stock. So the stock price of the Apple computer right now can be $1, but in one month, it can be two dollars or it can be 50 cents but we can yeah, make the transactions so for example right now i give one dollar and that then this guy gives me the one uh, share of apple stock so that's possible and then it is also possible that this guy gives me a uh, one share of stock but i promised him or her to pay $1.1 later. He might agree with this uh, transactions, but it is also possible that I'm, I give him or her $1 right now and promise to uh, get the Apple stock, whatever value it will be, but I can get that stock in the future. So that was the three transactions that I explained. The fourth one is that we have an agreement, but there is no cash flow from one side to other side right now, and there is no deliveries in the current uh, situations. But there is a only promise that that transaction can be, uh, will be executed in some future fixed time with the fixed price and that that value is not fixed, but that fixed product, that fixed Apple computer's stock. So the amount of the stock will be fixed, but the value, we don't know what value will be. So that kind of transaction is called a forward contract. Okay, so, and actually this is a, a, a yeah, it's that simple concept. It's a little bit complicated. So you, you might need uh, some time to think about it and talk about to other people so that you can have the full understanding of the, the financial, the futures contract, the, I mean the whole contract, but so just yeah, write down something. Yeah, so that I can make some more explanations on board contract. Okay, so 
the reason to the first one is one kind of hash. Yeah, that's exactly. So the main motivation why we did this first kind of transaction is, is to hedge. So for example, so let me take an example. So you know, right now, the, due to the, 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 the virus, the airplane industry is, yes, is not so good, but let's go back to the normal situations. So I can make a flight reservation in six months before the actual departure with some fixed price. But from the airplane company's point of view, how could it be possible then they can sell me a ticket six months before the actual departure because they don't know the actual uh, the oil price of the airplane. How can they sell, uh, the, say, the, the flight to Seoul to the United States? They can sell me the $1,000 for flight. But what if the oil price goes up? Then how can they handle? These situations. The answer is that they are going into the forward contracts. So they make a contract to the seller of the oil to, so there is an agreement. So I'm going to buy your oil in six months, that quantity. And the value, the, the price that I'm going to pay is already fixed so that the airplane companies can sell the tickets at a fixed price to me, because they know that with that ticket price, they can make yeah, uh, enough profits and they have the enough money to buy the oil in six months. So that's the one uh, way of hedge to the risk, because nobody knows the, what the value, uh, nobody knows the, what the value of the, the future oil price will be. So that's the one main reason why we do the forward contract. And other questions? Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna keep on. So I'm gonna go back to my pad. So this is the forward contract, and I hope everyone understands what forward contract means. And if you fully understand what forward contract means, you should understand the this. Payoff diagram. Uh, let's buy a... okay. So payoff diagram is a graph that shows all your profit or loss in the future because uh, even though I promise to buy a certain product at a certain price in the future time, and for me, yeah, if I really own a hedge transactions and there are my be a no gain or no loss. But let's suppose that I was a speculator. So I was just, yeah, I don't actually need the oil, but I just yeah, promised to buy that oil with that price. And then what's gonna happen can be represented by a graph. So that graph is called the payoff diagram. So in order to draw a payoff diagram, this is the ordinary two dimensional X and Y diagrams uh, you of which you learned in the high school. So I'm gonna draw the X and Y graph. But here, instead of writing the X and Y, I'm gonna write it with some more meaningful variables. So the X axis here is called the S sub T. And S means the price of the underlying asset, in which case you may think of about it as an apple, or if you, uh, or you may think it as an oil. And the capital T here means that this is not the current price. This is the actual real price in the future. So even though I promised to buy your Apple stock $1.1 in six months, 
the Apple uh, stock price will be much more than 1.1 and much be less than 1.1. So it could be zero and it could be yeah, some value, 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 value up to infinity. So that is the future actual value of the underlying asset. And here underlying assets, I mean underlying assets as on Apple or Apple stocks or even the oil. And here Y axis. So I need the positive way and the negative way. The, I need yeah, both of them because the positive means from my point of view. So actually we can draw this diagram with two different perspectives. So one from the buyer's point of view and one from the seller's point of view. So we are going to start from the buyer's point of view. And I'm gonna explain the seller's point of view too. So from the buyer's point of view, the positive sign means it's a profit, it's a gain. And the negative value means it's a loss. So let's go back to our uh, Apple examples. And we promised to, so the buyer promised to uh, buy on Apple $1.1. So what will be the profit or loss of the buyer when the actual price in six months is 1.1? So that means in six months, the actual price is 1.1, but I can buy it at uh, 1.1. That means there is no loss and there is no gain. So 1.1 means this point. So for the X values, it's 1.1, but for the Y values, it's zero. So the actual price of an apple is actually 1.1. There is no loss and there is no gain. But let me make a, a big jump. Let's say the apple, the company or the apple, the real apple is actually $2. But I can buy the $2 worth apple with $1.1. So I can make a profit. So this is the profit. And you can calculate the actual values. And on the, the other side, if the actual value of the, the apple will drop down to 0.5, then 0.5 is, will be around here, then I will make a loss. So when you draw this one all the way to here, and, and it goes here yeah, forever, this one is called the payoff diagram of a whole contract from the buyer's point of view. And we can express this equation, uh, this uh, graph into an equation. That equation is this one, is ST minus K. And here K is the price that we promise, I promise to buy. So, does it make sense? So here ST is a variable that can be from zero to up to infinity. And if ST is equal to zero, so if, it, if ST is equal to zero, then this whole value will be zero. And that point is represented here. So ST is equal to K, then the y value is zero. But if st is some bigger value than t, k, then there will be a profit. And if st is less than k, then there will be a loss. So that's the meaning of this graph and that's the meaning of this equation. Okay, now let's move on to the seller's point of view. The sellers, they also have the ST and this is the not profit, it's a payoff. So here is K, this is the price. So from the seller's point of view, this the K is the price that he is promised to 
receive by giving his products to the buyer. So let's say this is 1.1 and the future price is actually 1.1, then, uh, then there is yeah, no problem at all. So because the, there is no loss and there is no gain, so it's zero. But if the actual price of that product is going to be $2, but you promise to deliver your products with $1.1, but the actual price is $2, then you feel like, yeah, you lost. You lost some amount. So this is your loss. So here is a loss. But what if the actual price of an apple drops down to the $4.5? Then even though the price of the actual apple is $4.5, you deliver your products by uh, uh, pick, uh, uh, by receiving your $1.1. So this one goes like this. So this is the payoff diagram of a Ford contract from the seller's point of view. So how can we express this line in an equation? This is, okay, so let's do some uh, the <clears throat> uh, high school math. So here is the x-axis, here is the y-axis, and here is the k. So in order to build a linear graph. So this is a linear graph. So in old times, we write it as this here. Y is AX plus B. And we all know that A is the slope of a graph and B is the y-intercept. So what is the slope of this graph? And the slope is actually negative one. So it's negative one. So, and here the x is st and y is actually payoff. So we express it the x as a st and y as a payoff. So the y is payoff, x is st. And we, by looking at this graph, we see that the slope of this graph is negative one. So we may say that the payoff is negative st. And then only thing left is the y-intercept. So here is k and the slope is negative one. And when you go all the way to here, what would be the value of here? That would be k. So it's plus k here. So by rewriting this, this as k minus st. This is the payoff equation for the fourth contract from seller's point of view. So by comparing the buyer's point of view and the seller's point of view, we can summarize it as in this way. So this is the uh, buyer's view and this is the seller's view. And here is K and here is K. And the first graph is as T minus K. And the second graph, uh, second graph is K minus ST. Yeah. So this is the four contract. Now I'm, I think I'm ready to explain what the options are. And actually the options have two, two different kinds of options. The first one is called the call options. It is called the call options, it's called. And the second one is called the put options. <clears throat> and they are very strange, uh, uh, financial products because it gives the both one gives you right to claim that your profit but there is no obligations that you have to follow the the transactions so this is a strange 
because when you see the forward contract, the, from the buyer's point of view, okay, here is a profit, then, well, I like it from the buyer's point of view. But from the buyer's point of view, uh, this area is not preferable. But if you have an options, you have the right to exercise your profit, but there is no obligations to follow, to accept this loss. That's the option. So it seems very strange, but actually uh, there is an explanation why, we, why this can happens. So call option, so the, dif the difference between these two options is the call option is a right to buy. And put option is, is a right to sell. But in both case, <clears throat> it's not obligations. There is no obligations but only rights. So if you think you are going to be in a profit, then you have the right to do that. But if you think that you are gonna be in a trouble, then you don't have to do that. You have no obligations. And let me explain one by one. So the core option here is a right to buy, but not the obligations. And for the core options, uh, as you see in the forward contract, there is a buy side and there is a sell side. And for the call options, there are also two sides. So there is a person who wanted to buy the call option. There is, a, 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 I mean, <clears throat> it's rather to say that the buy the call option or sell the call option. I would say that uh, I'm gonna put another names here. So this is called the long position, uh, long position. And the seller is going to be set a short position. So the difference between the long position and short position is the long position is a person who is willing to buy the underlying asset and the short position is a person who is willing to sell the underlying assets. So this is quite clear in this forward contract, but when we go to the options contract, it might be a little bit more, dis uh, it might be a little bit more confusing. And if you go into a further, it's like the swap, then you are really confused to who is in a long position and who is in, in a short position. But there is a much easier, actually there is a easier way to uh, remember all these things, but I'm gonna explain later. So we just uh, wanna keep, uh, I wanna keep focus on this, but I'm afraid that I cannot finish explaining all these call options with the given times. So I may, stop here. So let's say that you know, I have explained what forward contract is and I hope everyone understand what forward contract is. And then next time, based on the understanding of the forward contract, I can explain what options, what is call options and what is a put options and what is the long position of the call and what is the the short position of the call and for the put options, there is also long position and there is a short position and their payoffs and their payoff equations, all these kind of things. And I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna explain it later. So before I finish uh, this, I think I need to take some questions from you. And I think uh, this is really nice way for you to understand something. So uh, if you already know what forward means, then, then that, that's fine. But if this is your first time 
to try to understand what board is, then put lots of questions to other students. And for the other students who might believe that uh, they knew the uh, four contract, is trying to help the other students and they realize that actually they did not uh, understand what it means. So the helping to each other can improve your overall uh, understanding of uh, these uh, weird uh, contracts. So I'm going to uh, stop the, this uh, blackboard and I'm going to uh, go back to whiteboard again and to see what you think about. So yeah, right. Any questions? And can you really understand what the mathematical equations? Simply it's just a linear equations so that you can, okay, is it sure the same as Kong Medo? Uh, yes, but uh, in some sense, yes. And in some sense, uh, uh, no. So for forward contract itself, it, uh, the seller is called the initial position. But if you are talking about stocks, and even if you don't have a stock, you can sell it. That's called the gong medo. So short is much broader term, and gong medo is also called the short selling, but it, it is a special case of the short position. So especially when you are talking about uh, the stocks, then you can say the gong medo is actually the sh short position. But if you are talking about the, the other uh, derivatives, then the gong medo is not the appropriate word for the short position. So, so what I mean is the short position is a much broader terminology and the short selling, the gong medo is a very specific terminology relevant to the stock. So, so far so good, thank you.